Okay, welcome back everyone. It's uh, my pleasure now to invite you to listen to our first powerful video story of the day. So we'll be presenting two video clips of Matt's experience of navigating social life with a diabetic foot ulcer. And Matt Anderson is uh, with us today and he'll be available for the reflection and dialogue session uh, that will follow the videos. So once again, during the session, please input any questions that you have in the question and answer box. And uh, we're gonna pose as many of these questions to Matt uh, after uh, the sessions. And uh, once again, review the reflective questions in your conference uh, workbook uh, to further engage in some uh, dialogue and discussion. And uh, let's turn it over and let's watch uh, the first part of Matt's video now. Uh, 30 years old, I used to play a lot of golf. Um, I was taking a shower and I, um, I had a varicose vein in my leg that popped. Uh, my shower looked like a horror movie scene. Um, I went to Emerge um, where the doctor looked at my vein, closed me up, stitched it up, everything like that. And then he took off my sock and said, what's with your toe? And it had a big blister on it that I had been covering up with a bandage that I had gotten from a new pair of golf shoes. He's like, this is an ulcer, it's diabetic. But put me on antibiotics. Um, the ulcer was infected. I was on IV antibiotics for probably three months. Um, then he sent me to a chiropodist and the chiropodist told me to soak my foot in Epsom salts for an hour a day. That's the way the wound was gonna heal. I never heard of debridement. I might, like I saw the, I saw the chiropodist once every two months. Mm -hmm. um, so the wound, it healed and then it came back. What had happened from soaking my foot, um, it soaked away the joint. How the surgeon explained to me, he said, all the soaking of your foot with an open wound soaked away the joint so the wound could heal, but the joint did damage to your foot. So it affected your offloading and it caused the reoccurrence. So that was, that was the start of it. Right. That was my first wound. I didn't, I didn't have a wound care plan. My, my diabetes was non-compliant at the time. I got told I was diabetic when I was 22. Basically, the doctor that told me I was diabetic when I was 22, word for word, looked at me and said, you're fat, lose weight, your diabetes will go away. And as a 20-year-old kid, it's impressionable, his mother just died. Last thing I wanted to hear was that from a doctor. I could have used a helping hand, but he just basically painted the picture because I was, like, I'm a huge dude. I'm, I'm six foot five. Um, I, I, I weigh 375 pounds. I used to, I've, I'm, I'm on a weight loss journey right now myself too. I've lost about 175 pounds in the last two years. Oh, I feel amazing. much better. I've got, I've got a hundred pound to go and then hopefully I'll be eligible for a kidney transplant. But to my, what led me to my wounds and my was ignorance at first. It was ignorance, panic, and we're like, okay, it's just a cut. It'll be fine. Why isn't it healed? Why isn't it healed? Because when I when I like when I learned that I had diabetes, like I said, I was very young, and who, like a twenty year old doesn't listen all the time either. It's not as if I ignored it, but I didn't know what it was, and I didn't care to research it because I had other things to deal with. As soon as I got my first wound, then I got a diabetes specialist, and then he put me on insulin for the first time. So then I'm starting to take care of my diabetes with insulin and I'm not very good at it. No one really tells me take this much, take this much. I kind of just did it on the fly. Um, and so my sugar was up and down like a toilet seat all the time. And so I get these wounds and then I worked on them. Like I used to be a superintendent in an automotive factory. So I ran a factory. Uh, 300,000 square feet. I was on my feet in steel toe boots all the time. I was going through a divorce, everything like that. I couldn't really afford to go off work. I had a mortgage to pay, I had to pay for a truck. So finally, the doctor that put me on insulin, I, I got another wound, had to go off, and he referred me to dermatology and wound clinic. I was probably about 31 years old. So I'm, I'm turning 48 uh, this year, so 17 years ago. What do they tell you when you get an ulcer? Stay off your foot. Stay off your foot, offload it as best that you can. And these are the these are the tools we have to do it. And 
and an ulcer doesn't heal in three months. But I started to have to miss work and go off work. And that was very hard for me because I was in management and I worked in a factory. The, the attitude towards anyone, if they worked on the line in a factory was like, they're a scam artist. They're, they're not really hurt. They're not really this. And in my head, I'm thinking, damn, man, are people thinking that about me? Like I'm their leader. And are they thinking I'm a scam artist because I'm off work sick, right? All that stuff goes through your head. You start feeling like you're not worth anything. You start feeling horrible because you, you, you're not making money. Like I've been on disability since 2017. My wife's the sole breadwinner in the house, except for my Canada disability plan. Like, I've probably lost a million dollars in income because of my diabetic ulcer. I'm disabled and like I have to come to the grips with that and the government gives me a, a, a tiny fraction of money a month. I spend half of what I make from mm -hmm. my disability on my disabilities. We don't plan for anything. We don't save for anything because we can't, right? But like I basically had to give up my career. I can't go do my career again because I can't walk for long periods of time. Because if I do, I'll just end up repeating the cycle again. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of guilt when you go off work. You feel bad. You feel like your employer is talking about you. You just can't help to get inside your own head. I used to golf all the time. I don't play golf anymore. I used to play hockey with the guys on the ice after work. I can't skate anymore. Like all all that stuff. I bought a, I bought a bicycle the other day and I don't know if I'm going to be able to ride it because of my foot. Do you know what I mean? Like, or I'm going to have to modify the pedal, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an extra cost. Like my daughter plays baseball. Hey, where's the parking lot? It's going to be a far, it's going to be a far walk. Like oh. I have to, fi I think about that. It's $200 a month to get my foot taken care of. Add that on to my $250 a month for my diabetes supplies. Do you know what I mean? And then add that on for my $150 a month for my test sensors. Like it, and the government only gives you 1400 a month if you're on disability and half of it's gone. And you have to pay CPP and EI at the end of the year and they charge you, they charge you tax on your tax returns. Mm -hmm. wow. So they tax you 33% when you're on government disability too, just so oh. you know. Like it, it affects your entire life. Like it just for my day to day, like it affect, it, it starts from the, the minute I wake up, right? I have to get up an hour earlier because I got a shower and then I have to keep it dry. So I shower on a stool with my foot out of the water and I sit down and then I shower, keep my foot dry. Then I have to go and change my dressing, clean my foot. You know what I mean? Change my dressing, put my, put everything on it. That takes another extra half hour. My home care nurse comes and sees me once a week right? Just to keep things going um, and just to keep an eye on it, right? So it's an extra half hour to 45 minutes of my day, just making sure my foot's dressed. The way it runs and the, it's almost like the sicker you get, the more people care. If people treated you at the initial onset of a problem, the way they treat you when it's fatal or going to affect your li affect your livelihood, mm -hmm. a lot more people will be healthier. Yeah. So it's, I can't like my wife, do you want to go for a walk? Like I do, I'd love to go to a, for a walk, but I can't go for a five kilometer walk. Even if my feet were, didn't have any wounds, I wouldn't go for a five kilometer walk just based on the fact that I might get a wound, but it's the summertime. I'm not, I'm the only guy wearing socks and shoes. When you have a chronic illness, you, you, you take little things like that. You don't take little things like that for granted, like wearing flip flops, wearing like, do you know what I mean? Not having to count your carbs, not having to worry about, hey, do you want to go swimming in the pool? No, I can't because I've had a bandage on my foot for 17 years. It affects every every decision. Do you want to, where can we go on a vacation? I don't, I can't walk on the beach. Yeah. Right? I can't walk on the beach. I can't get my foot wet. Why do I want to go sit in a hundred degree heat when I can't put my foot in the water? Mm -hmm. Right? So then you sacrifice fun, you sacrifice, you, you, mm -hmm sacrifice a lot and people oh you just don't want to do anything oh you just don't want to yeah well that's i've got to accommodate my my injury 24 yeah. 7. 
like my wife is obviously my number one support and the, i mean everything that this does to her like it's in the back of my head like that's all i think about is the burden on her it affects her just as much as it affects me but it affects her in different ways if it was a one income family i'd rather it be me it is what it is so we have to move forward and we have to get through so i go i go through i go i belong to this gym it's called are you game conditioning club they're angels sent from heaven these two people and their gym has a a holistic training attitude it's for holistic health the, the idea is they help people with ailments like me it it was hard for me to walk into that place i was intimidated to go but they basically just took me in like a big warm blanket no judgment no nothing everybody was like the whole entire membership rallied around me and stuff like that they saw that i was coming it's just something that i can't really explain the community of people like this but they're all like unicorns everyone has everyone's back my mentality prior to the last couple of years was okay it's what are you going to do to get better well you just got to sit here right but now my mentality is if i can do something do something if i sure i can't work out on my foot i can work out on my chest do you know what i mean like yeah. it's not about what i can't do it's about what i can do i started posting stuff online and i started posting stuff on my instagram stories putting hashtags like weight loss and and diabetic and amputee and stuff like that and i started to get attention because of it and i started to get messages from people going mad you're like inspiring me so in essence i basically asked the whole world for help and like my whole world for help and i've got support like the biggest thing is just to stay positive like you have to stay positive you have to have the right mindset the last couple of years i've been able to Ever, I've been able to stay positive with the group of people that uh, I surround myself with now. Okay. We have a few minutes before we're going to share the second video clip, and what we want to do is is just hold this, continue to hold the space for your reflection. Uh, for you to share your insights. Uh, and we, again, we invite you to share uh, in the chat box or in the question and answer. Um, and, and Matt, just want to say thank you for sharing a little bit with us about, about your journey and your experience. Not a problem. Happy to help. So maybe just to start us off again with uh, just an open-ended question as as you were listening to to Matt's story to Matt's journey um, what was emerging for you how did you find yourself reacting are you posing the question to me right now or to your audience well I thought I would just start off with an open-ended question to to the audience those who are here with us this morning oh, okay. those who have have listened to your story but but certainly Matt please please step in um, and, and and share with us if there are elements of of your journey that you'd like to uh, to, to share more about okay um yeah no I just I I when you watch little sound bites, little skippets and everything like that, um, with what it's been going on, it, it, some things like it does, it, it, I don't want you to, I don't want it to come off as completely negative. Like it's not like it's, there's positives in everything and all that. But I mean, as far as the day to day, um, as far as the day to day, it's, it can be overwhelming at times. And I don't think a lot of people realize it because it's something you can't see. Right. I don't limp. I don't like I limp a bit, but I, everything on me is hidden. Right. So it's one of those ones out of sight, out of mind. Matt, I'm wondering, you you talked a little bit about the power of community and a community of support. Uh, I'm wondering if you can share a little bit more uh, about that. OK, well, it's I'm not. It, I can't, I can't lie and say I've been Peter positivity, the, the, you know what I mean? The, the most motivated person forever. Like th there's, there's transparency in my health, in my health history, just due to the fact that, yeah, I was non-compliant for a long bit of time. And, 
you know, you do, you force yourself to do what the doctors tell you when you're dealing with a chronic ulcer, right? So the doctors will tell you, sit down. That's all you can really do. Stay off your foot. So you withdraw and you don't go out socially and you don't, um, you don't, you do what you're told, sit on your butt. And that's the only way your foot will heal. But I mean, you, you miss a lot of life because of that. So for the first like half of me dealing with having an ulcer, it was just, okay, got to do what they say, sit down, put your foot up in the air and everything like that. And then the second half of it was like, forget this. I have kids. I coach baseball. I do this. Like, and so I did, I coach baseball with an IV pick line stuck in my arm and a, and a air cast wearing an air cast all over a baseball field for three seasons long. So, but, and it was that environment that gave me a sense of purpose because of the fact that I had been off work so long and everything like that. And so I was coaching a pretty high level sport and going through it all. And I went like, I, I coached really high level sports for about four years, had a couple surgeries and my life kept going on. So then I'd always had a, I've been a big guy my entire life. Um, and like, I've lost 5,000 pounds in my life, but I've gained 5,500. So I've just, it's, that's always been my battle. So last couple of years, I, it's like I said in the video, I, I met, I met these people that own this gym and it, and it's, and honestly, it was like a big warm blanket. It was like, I'm a big guy. I have confidence. I'm not unconfident in my size, but I know my size was destroying me. Um, and that's the root of all my health problems. Like I'm, I'm six foot five, 375 pounds. Every time I take a step, it's 1500 pounds of pressure. So how are you going to offload that? Right. It's a little different offloading for me than it is offloading for the average person. That's 175 pounds, five foot eight. Right. I'm, I'm three of that person. So, or two of that person, but so going back to community and everything like that, once, once I hit, once I got the right community around me that rallied this, and it was basically the start of a gym that I went to. And as I said, wrapped me up like a big warm blanket. I started to adopt just a pot. I, I just, I felt myself I didn't even have to do with the, the physical activity. It's just the mentality. And, um, everything, everything I did, I wanted to start winning at, like, I wanted to be compliant with my diabetes. I wanted my sugars to be good. I wanted this to be that. Like it, it just, it turned my focus around. And these people are people that like, I'll never go to another gym in my life. I'll never go anywhere. I will just basically, um, I will basically, it's, it, they're the catalyst for my push forward um, with regards to my, with my health. And so I'm passionate about my health. However, I get painted with that brush because of my size, because of my obesity, because of my past. And sometimes doctors don't believe me that I want to be compliant and that I am compliant, that I'm working my tail off to do it. And so, yeah, it's, it's, and now I've been hit with this uh, new situation with, with my uh, kidney failure. So I'm on dialysis. And it's like, what else are you going to do? So I, I had the one pack of chronic illnesses. Now I got the two pack and there's both no cure. So this is what it, it's come full circle. I've, I've been dealing with wounds for 17 years. I've had multiple infections, antibiotics and everything like that. And like, is there anything, I said this in one of my videos to the doctor, is there anything other than betadine and gauze that you can put on a wound because it hasn't worked for 17 years? And I'm not saying that's not a, that's not a knock at my, my care because I, I, I trust my doctors. I trust everything that they do. And they, and they, the ones that I have that deal with my wounds are the first ones that really trusted me. And when I say to them, this, this air cast doesn't work because it doesn't work for me because of the deformity of my foot, they listen. To me. And I say like, no, I need to offload this. I need my, my orthotist and I work hand in hand um, together. Right. So my orthotist is basically Melanie at back to feet. She's basically the most important person in my wound care, foot care journey. Like it, it, I, I, and I wanted to bring it today just to show you on camera, but I didn't. It was the soul of my air cast that they here wear an air cast. This will offload the pressure. 
But like, if you take the sole of my air cast, there's 17 different layers of foam on it, holes cut out of it that she, so, so I could offload, right? There's a lot that goes, the most that goes into offloading. And so the problem when you're in a wound care clinic, there is not one person in that clinic. Well, there is some people, but, but they're not, there's no offloading specialist. So while they're cutting out pieces of foam to put in your shoe, so it takes away some pressure, like it's Mickey Mouse. So do you know what I mean? Like, why isn't there an orthotist, a chiropodist? Like at, at the clinic I go to, Women's College Hospital, they, they can't hire a, like a chiropodist full time. Like you have four different chiropodists that work one day a week that are, they, they're like a specialized thing and the government won't pay for a full-time chiropodist. That is baloney. Like they're, they're essential. Every, they are essential to every single diabetic. So how many people have diabetes in Canada? But they can't, for the best clinic in, in, in Ontario for wound care, they can't hire a full-time chiropodist. Do you know what I mean? Like doctors are sitting there. I know my doctors are frustrated because they, they, there's a group of them there's a group of them that all have the same collective, um, all have the same collective um, vision for wound care, and they're fighting against the archaic. Nope, let's cut it off. Nope, we can't do things this way. And people that don't want to change ways, and it's so you can see the struggle, right? Like you can see the struggle. And there's no, if they don't give you the funding, well, how are you going to help, right? And that's where the patient comes in because you gotta, you gotta rob Peter to pay Paul. You know what I mean? To, to, like, I'm 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 on Canada disability. I make zero money a month. My wife has three kids to support. Like, I spend half my income on, uh, like, brace adjustments, orthotics, diabetes sensors, all this stuff, right? And so it's, where's where's the problem? I don't, I don't know. I don't even think that was the question, but I just went on a rant there. Sorry. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, very, very powerful uh, insights and, and very important questions. Uh, thank you. Um, a few questions are starting to, to pop up in the question and answer, um, but we do want to make sure we leave uh, enough time to show the second part of your video. So maybe okay. we can we can play the second part of the video and then we can start to to delve into some of the questions that uh, that are starting to emerge. Okay, you just tell me which ones you want me to answer and I'll answer them. <laughs> like if you want to talk about full circle and how this all started and everything like that, this all start I've had 17 ulcers in my life. I've been on IV antibiotics off and on probably for about 10 of the last 17 years. Right? And plus the oral antibiotics. Why do you think my kidneys don't work? Right? Yeah. My kidneys That's don't priority. work because my wounds don't heal. Yeah. Right? So it's come full circle. Here you go. I'm a burden on the healthcare system because the healthcare system didn't work from the start. Like I love my doctor at the wound care clinic, but I've been doing the same thing to my foot for 15 years. I see my orthotist once a month to adjust my orthotics when I have pain in my foot or a red spot or a hot spot. I'm diligent with my chiropody care, but nothing's changed. In like the last two years I've lost 175 pounds. I work out every day and then bang, my foot still has an ulcer. Yeah. Won't heal, comes back, and then I got kidney. I just found out I got kidney failure two months ago. It's the biggest thing I can do for myself is advocate for myself. And we say that to our children. We say that to, you have, if you can't advocate for yourself, if you're like, I get it, you are far smarter than I am, but I know my body way better than you do, right? And so I'm not going to insult your intelligence when I come into your office, but don't insult mine by assuming that I don't care about my health by the picture that you see with your eyes. And because, especially for big guys like me, and I've talked to other big guys like me, you see a doctor and they look at you, they don't care what you've done or what you're doing. They only care about your history. And your history says you're a fat diabetic that's non-compliant. That's how they treat you. I had to come up with the nerve to ask for help right like if i didn't ask someone for help 
I wouldn't have got the help I needed. The doctors at the kidney clinic were like, your kidneys are failing. Your kid, your your creatinine level, it's like seven. It, you're in failure, but we're gonna wait two more weeks and see if uh, it, it responds to put you on dialysis. And I was like, what are you waiting for? I felt like crap for six months. Yeah. My, my, my blood work is worse than my last blood work. And you wanna wait another two weeks? Oh. I was in the dialysis clinic the next week. The thing is, the, there's not enough wound care clinics, but also I've had seven different chiropodists at my wound care clinic. Seven since I've started. Do you think the government could like come up with $150,000 to hire one of them full time? They can't even get the funding for a full time chiropodist. So they call in the head of Wounds Canada to fill in on a Tuesday and they call this person to fill in on a Wednesday and this person to fill on Thursday. Really? There's access. There's no, you can't even have access because they won't even hire someone to have access to because there's no consistency when you see someone different all the time. I, I just, I feel they need to take wound care seriously. I feel the government doesn't understand like, oh, someone's a burden on the healthcare system. Well, you should really crunch those numbers and see what, how much this affects a person. Like if you're gonna crunch government numbers, crunch personal numbers. If you wanna help the healthcare system, start at the start and don't, don't wait till the end because if you wait till the end yeah that's you treat me nice when I'm about gone but treat yeah. me nice treat me nice when I'm here yeah. and I might be here longer and less of a burden on you mm -hmm. if you want if you want to run a wound care clinic and you want to heal wounds you need to employ every discipline in the same clinic so that you can heal the wound together. Because I think you get in a big match with your, your wound doctors and mm -hmm. your orthotists mm -hmm. and your chiropodists. The orthotists, it, the orthotist doesn't work with the chiropodist and the wound doctor. So the wound doctor and the chiropodist are on side. And then the, the orthotist, if you get something happen to your wound, it's the orthotist's fault. My orthotist is plays a huge part in me healing. I take my brace to my orthotist. I tell her what's going on. She fixes it. It's the patient's job to offload and manage his sugars. It's the physician or the care team's job to make sure his debridement's good so new skin can form and that whatever he's got on his foot, his her foot, is offloading the wound correctly. So they don't have that one key person working in there who really understands how to offload pressure. It's all bedside manner. It is. If your if your patient wants to talk to you for five, 10 minutes, talk to your patient for 10 minutes. Physicians, you can't paint every person with the same brush that come through your doors. People are looking for help. I go back as a 22 year old or a 20 year old to that doctor that said, you're fat, you're diabetic, it's your own fault, lose weight. See, it's, but that's 28 years ago and it's screwed with my head. I mean, if you're diabetic and they have a wound, if you're not compliant, your wounds aren't going to heal straight up. Um, it, 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 you need to keep your A1Cs at least 7.5. Do you know what I mean? Like, not everyone can keep a perfect 6 A1C, but if your A1Cs are, are, are like under 7.5 or whatever, you should be able to control and, and, and heal. And that's the biggest thing is stay off. It, it, like, it's exactly what you say to heal it. Stay off it control your blood sugars and that's that's the only thing to heal it right adapt if you don't adapt and make changes then you you won't beat it and you can't do cardio like walking is the best exercise you can do i can't mm -hmm. walk for a long period of time mm -hmm. even if it's on a treadmill it's still walking for a long period of time right mm -hmm. yeah. can't do elliptical for cardio i have to box sitting on a box yeah so i'm just doing all upper body stuff right Mm -hmm. okay. Don't think about what you can't do. Just think about what you can. The key for someone to advocate for themselves is they have to have the confidence to do it. So the only reason I got confident at advocating for myself is because I started to read about what was going on with my foot. I started to understand why I was getting the ulcers. I started to understand how they like, because when you explain an ulcer, when you explain an ulcer to someone, they're like, well, it's just a cut. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. It comes from the inside. 
right? They don't understand it's a breakdown of bones. They don't understand it's your foot, uh, your diabetic foot breaking down. They don't, they don't understand that. I treated this, I treated my ulcers in a reactive nature for the first half mm-hmm. of my lifetime having ulcers. And I've been a proactive for the last half of my life dealing with my ulcers. So now I get one, I'm very proactive about it. So my advice to someone, you have to advocate yourself, but you can't, you can't wait one when you get something you have to go to the doctor right away you have to be compliant if you're going to advocate yourself the only way you can advocate for yourself is to be compliant because if you're if you're being compliant then you have an then you have a leg to stand on so to speak and you have an argument because you're doing what you're told and you're trying to get better like i'm the youngest guy to average that clinic ever since i've been going to it like i don't really see much people younger than me mm-hmm. and so when I see someone younger, I want like I inherently want to reach out to them and say, "Hey, listen, like don't take this, take this seriously from the start." Yeah. Thank you again, uh, Matt, for for sharing with us uh, about your journey uh, and your very very powerful powerful story. Um, there's a couple questions uh, in, in the Q&A um, that, uh, that would allow us, I think, to, to build on what you were sharing um, before, before the second video. And the question, the question is, uh, Matt, I would love to know how the people at your gym made you feel like you belonged. I think we could learn something as health providers, as you noted, if people treated you from the onset with genuine care. You walk into a gym and people look at you and say, okay, how can we help you? This is what we're going to do. And they, they, they want to help you from the minute you go in. And it's, it's not a big box gym. It's, it's a small independent mom and pop shop. And it's what it is. It's are you game conditioning club? And it is literally, it's a unicorn. There's the husband and wife team that own it are they're Like I make jokes about it. I, they're sent from heaven. Like I, I like that old show Highway to Heaven with Michael Landon, and I and I call the owner that because he is he's he they're the type of people that they give themselves and they don't expect anything in return, and the philosophy that they adopt within the whole community um, is just something I've adopted and embraced. Like when I found out I had kidney problems, I I've been going to the gym for two years and they rallied up and. You know, everyone there is like concerned about my issues and they're behind me on my goal to lose like my weight loss goal is to lose 275 pounds. I'm 175 pounds there. So they're like it's, it's the people there that that push me to, to go. Right. Like I know I can I know I can improve my health and with, with consistency. And, and I've noticed that over the last couple of years, my health improved, improved, improved. And then I got hit with this dialysis thing. And so it was like, okay, fine. Which, how am I going to find a way to get through the dialysis so that I can get healthy enough so that I'm going to get transplant. And it's like, literally, if I didn't have the people that I had for the last two years at this gym, and I got diagnosed with another foot ulcer and uh, my dialysis that I'm dealing with right now, I don't know if I would have made it. Like, honestly, I don't know if I would have had to drive. I, I like I was a different person at 550 pounds and like now I'm basically just at the weight I've been at my entire life but my head has changed because of these people in that group and they're just and they've they've really given me driven it into my head like it's not about what I can't do it's about what I can do and if I can get my message out there and like there's people like me that are I helped the guy the other day um who's a big guy 300 pounds he's got diabetic he walks at his feet all day long but he didn't know what to do like he lives in Napanee he doesn't know where to buy shoes he doesn't know good stuff and everything like that so I'm like okay bud you got to get an ortho you, you you need to get a pair of orthotics right off the hop you need to get in a pair of shoes that fit like you so you're looking at new balance that's just the way it rolls but that's however I can help people based on that that's what I'm going to do but yeah I don't know if that answered at all, but like, that's, it's just, it is, it's, it's, it's a big warm blanket. And like, I've never struggled with confidence. 
in my life, but I have been upset and I had like, I, my health has caused a lot of stress in my life. And this is, that place is just something I look forward to every day. And it, and it's, it, it, it relieves a lot of stress and keeps my head in the right space while dealing with chronic illnesses. There's a, uh, a question that has come up in the, the question and answer. It says, uh, Matt, do you think talking to another individual with diabetes would have helped you from the beginning of your journey? I'm asking because uh, you, you said you would like to talk to other young people you see in the clinic. Absolutely. I, absolutely. If I see, if I see someone that, because like when you're diabetic, they just, here you go, you're diabetic. Here's a plastic foot. Make sure you take care of it. Put cream on it. That's all they tell you. They don't tell you, they don't show you a horror story. They don't show you my feet in a picture. If I was shown my feet at 22 years old and said, if you don't take care of yourself, this is what your feet will look like. And it'll be fast and rapid and it'll just deteriorate over time. Like that probably would have scared me seeing my feet. Like that's people, I have, I have hundreds of pictures on my phone, right? Like I've, I've dealt with a ton of stuff. Um, um, and that's the thing, like, this is definitely not a knock on healthcare practitioners because there's some great ones and there's some really bad ones. And if you can't, if you, yeah, if you can't see the fact that people are, people that come to see a doctor don't go to see a doctor because they're happy or because everything's great. Right. So I get it. You're the smartest people in the world, but you have like, show some compassion. Do you know what I mean? And that, and that's, that's just, it just comes full circle to that. Uh, Darren, I'm just going to jump in. Um, so Matt, um, you know, I, I really appreciate your, you know, you know, your openness and your discussion about all the challenges within the system, uh, you know, with continuity of care and communication and collaboration. So, you know, what I hear you saying is, you know, the healthcare system kind of telling you, what to do rather than, you know, you kind of telling the system, you know, what your needs are. And oh, I'm just wondering. And, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you finish. Sorry. I, I'm bad at interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's fine. I, sorry. you know, and you know, the conference is about, you know, people's stories and, and how it can empower others. So do you think that perhaps your story could be you know, utilized in, in care settings to, to share with other patients who are at I, risk for diabetic foot ulcers who are experiencing this to get I, an understanding? I'm an absolute poster boy. I'm the poster boy because one, like, I'm not afraid to sit down and talk. And I've said this, I've said this uh, to my doctor. I mean, I would love to talk to people and it's under be there as an advocate in a clinic just because like... <sighs> Part of the problem, it's not all healthcare's problem. Part of the problem is the patient. If the patient does, is not compliant and the patient tries to blow smoke up the proverbial doctor's butt, it's not going to happen. Like you can, you can, you can, a doctor can look at you just by your blood work and tell you if you're trying or not. Right. So it's, it, you have, in order to get the care that you need, you have to really warrant the care you need too. Right. Like if, if I, for the first few years where I had ulcers, I fought tooth and nail against every single doctor I had at the clinic. Like, it was, whatever. I was in denial. I pushed them away. I didn't listen. And um, then I was finally like, no, I want to see the same doctor on the same day every week. I want consistency in my health care. I'm taking care of this now. Where do we go from there? So it's, it's not, it, health care, health care, is changing and I can, I've been in the wrong, like I've been on the burden side of the healthcare system for half of my life, right? And I can see the changes in healthcare slowly emerging for the better. And for, but you can't, like it's, it's not about blame. It's just about collectively working together. And I don't feel there's enough of togetherness and the, and the, if that's because of financial constraints that like i just don't understand why you can't have three key disciplines in one clinic and then there you go why can't it be a one-stop shop right 
Matt, there's a, a question that, that has come up in the question and answer. Um, what has motivated you to stay positive? Um, well, like, I mean, I have my wife and my kids, obviously, like I don't, I don't, I, I, but it, it, it like the, my positive, my change, I've always been positive. Like I've always looked at the bright side of things. Okay. Or six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Right. I, I, I can always find a solution. Um, I can always put a bow on something if I really need to. However, um, my the biggest thing about my positivity and staying positive is I realize it when I'm negative now. I something clicks in me that says, "No, you're going, you're going back, you're going back to that negative place." And it's I listen to it a podcast this guy Ethan Supli he's an actor he used to be huge and he's lost a bunch of weight he's lost 250 pounds he's jacked but he he has a guy on his he has a guy on his thing and, and his slogan is kill your clone so and he basically explains that you have a clone of yourself every day so every day that you do something different you're killing your clone so every day I try and kill my clone um, so that I come out better than what I was the day before and some days are hard. Like I get, I got a boatload of diagnoses on my back, but I refuse to, I refuse to give up. Like as I started, as I was going through a weight loss journey, I started posting stuff online and it really motivated me. And it really, I really realized it inspired others and the, the messages of ins inspiration and everything like that, that fueled me at times. And, and it really pushed me. And then it was like, the reason, the, the whole sole reason I went to the doctors to find out about my kidneys is because I was in a plateau on weight loss. And it was like, I wasn't posting stuff and I wasn't inspiring people. And I wasn't, people were, you know what I mean? I was like in my head going, people are waiting to see how much weight I've lost. Like you need to keep going, going, going. So I guess throwing it out there and putting my challenges with my health and my life online and being transparent about taught me to be honest with myself. And really just said, yeah, you have a lot to give and you have a lot that you have a lot to your message is important. And if you get it out to as many people as possible, you're going to be able to help people while helping yourself. And it just really gives me a feeling of it just I'm grateful for the opportunity to try and help other people, because if if I can avoid some guy who's 30 years old to avoid the next 17 years of BS that I've gone through with my feet by a simple conversation with them. That's like, I'm changing that guy's life. Do you know what I mean? Because if someone sat down with me and told me that, like, and scared me, like, but not be a jerk about it, it could have changed my life. Like, I mean, I'm not going to look back and say whatever, but if I can, if I can help push like because some people don't want to some people don't want to talk to a prim and proper doctor do you know what i mean some people want to talk to a big dude with a beard and tattoos that that's that's they can relate to do you know what i mean so and i'm not knocking like it's just there, there's smart people at every there there's intelligent people at every level and but some people just some people just don't jive that way and that the communication amongst everybody it's got to be, you know what I mean, uniform. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Matt, and thanks, everyone. Uh, we're at the end of the session. So on behalf of Wounds Canada and Lakehead University uh, School of Nursing, I'd like to thank uh, Matt Anderson for his inspiring presentation on uh, his experience with diabetic foot ulcers. So please remember to visit the virtual exhibit hall to learn more about this uh, this session and available resources. Join our networking lounge and connect with other attendees and uh, get some uh, peer support and, and generate some more discussion. So now we're gonna have a break uh, from 11.15 uh, to 11.30. So once again, thank you so much, Matt, and we'll see you at the next session. Thank you.